Hey guys, it's your boy Cabrera, and welcome to this video where, where I will be reviewing Liverpool season, the 16-17 season, which ended with a top four finish, which in hindsight sounds good, but Oh, there is more to this story. So if you somehow did not pay any attention to the, to the uh, season just gone, welcome to my, my personal hell. Yeah, we finished top four and it was a hell. So I'll be going through the season and I'll be reviewing the players. As you can see, I have the players... In front of me, this is the most up to date players, so this may not like include some youngsters like I don't know, Barstit or how, where you, how you say his name. He might not be there, I, I don't know if he's there. I've recalled everyone from loan because I had to start a new career mode and it's still. For some reason, even though I said to update the squad, for some reason it still had a lot of the players on on loan. I'm pretty sure their loans end as soon as the season ends, bro. Wait. Maybe they haven't. I don't know. I don't care. Anyway, let's start at the top. Bogdan. He didn't play this season. He was immediately shipped out on load to Wigan, if I'm not mistaken. He got injured and he didn't play. He, he since he did get injured. So, uh, yeah, let's just ignore Bogdan. He'll probably be sold or released. Carius. Oh, what? What to say about Carius? We were all hoping that he would be the answer to our goalkeeping problems. Instead, he brought new ones. Somehow. Now. I was talking to a fellow Liverpool fan on Twitter, and they said we should give Carius another season because it might be the case that he was just struggling to get used to the Premier League. But I, I, don't, I don't believe that because I would think it would be easier for a goalkeeper. Like, maybe, uh, I don't want to make excuses for him, you know? He had a bad season. He own, he has to own up to it. I mean, Mignolet replaced him halfway through the season. And he was brought in to replace Mignolet. If you're a replace, but a guy you were brought in to replace, you're not a good keeper. Now, I'm all for giving Carrius another chance in this next season in the cup competitions. Or in preseason if Jurgen Klopp so chooses. I'd be more than happy for that to happen. And if Karius can show that he maybe was just a case of him adjusting to life in a new country. Like I said, I'm not trying to make excuses for him. But, it, you know, I'd say at least play him in... Five to ten games next season, and see how he go gets on. If he's terrible, then you get rid of him, bring in a new keeper to a uh, to battle Minule. Hey, I'll discuss that more when I get onto a later name. Uh, Bacarius, he'll he'll have to move on if if it if indeed he is just gonna keep being shit. And uh, for for his season, I'm going to rate K 
Paris out of 10. I'm going to do that for every keeper who who played some games. Every, and every player. For his first season in Liverpool, I give him a 2 out of 10. He was that bad. Manninger brought in to do absolutely nothing. He played no games for us. Like, he didn't even play in the Cups. I mean, I don't know. I don't know why was he brought in. I, I honestly do not know. I mean, uh, some reports saying he's retired now or... He is going to retire or his contract is up, which I'm not sure. doesn't say it there whether it is this summer or not. So the game, sometimes the game is right. I can tell you when a player's thing is up or not. If you're wondering why it's in um, the uh, pounds, it doesn't matter. Currency really doesn't matter, or we're just focusing on reviews and sees and uh and and uh, transfer targets. I'm not actually gonna be buying anyone. This is not a uh, career mode that's gonna matter. So, to my memory, Man Manninger didn't play any games, so I can't rate him. And now we come to, and no Liverpool fan, I don't care who you are, or even I, I'm going to be, sh I'm shocked that I have to say this. But we move on to our best keeper, Simon Mignolet. Especially towards the end of the season, he was pulling out saves, he got a good few clean sheets towards the end of the season, and they're like, Sitting there thinking, um, who are you and what have you done with that shit guy we called Simon Minulay? Who the hell is this guy? It, it, have Carrius and Minulay somehow switched personalities and, and bodies and such? Because Minulay was playing as good as we were expecting Carrius to play. As I said, when he got back into the team, Minuli, he was very consistent. He didn't, like, he had a few, few games where he could have done better, her, her, but he didn't have any he, he games where you're like, oh my god, he's so bad, can we please put Karius back in goal? So, for his season, I am going to give Minule a 7.5 out of 10. Hmm. Actually, no, I'm going to give him an 8. I'm going to give him an 8. I think he was, and I really can't believe I'm saying this, one of the, her, her player's in the team. I mean, we owe top four really a lot down to a lot is thanks to Minuli. A lot of the reason we got top four is thanks to Minuli. And we move on to the final goalkeeper in the main squad that the game has in its database and that is his ward. Who spent the season on loan at Huddersfield. Actually got him promoted via the playoffs. He was uh, very instrumental in that. Now there's thoughts of him being sold to Huddersfield. Or he might go on loan again. I look at him and... The championship is a different league 
to the Premier League. It is night and day. It's night and day. And it, I, it may, now if Jurgen Klopp wants to loan Danny Ward to Huddersfield, and you know he, they can use him next season. And if he plays well, he comes back to us, and we can either keep him as a backup to Mignolet, or we could sell him. him. And if he has a good season. Then he's worth a little bit extra. The way I see it, it's win-win. Um, I didn't watch Huddersfield a lot. Like I really only watched their semi-finals and the final in the uh, playoffs, and a few games here and there where they were involved. So I, I can't and tell you whether Ward had a good season or not, but it seemed like he played very well in the playoffs. But I'm not going to give him a ring because he. this is about Liverpool, and he did not play he, a Liverpool team last season. Joe Gomez, he he came back from his injury. Uh, I didn't really get, get any involvement. Hopefully that will uh, be different in City. And uh, in the next season, I'm said season two. I'm, I'm thinking career <laughs> for some reason. Um, yeah. I, I, you see Arsenal giving. I. I I'm one of the people who watches Arsenal fan TV just to see the rants that the regulars like DT, he go on whenever they fuck up. It just makes me feel better about all of Liverpool are playing bad, if I'm being brutally honest. Plus, they're damn entertaining. But one thing I noticed about what our, uh, the Arsenal fans were saying was they were giving a lot of praise to Rob Holding. And I... Now, they're, they're, they're two different players, but I see similarities in, like, they're both really young players who came into the Premier League from a lower league he, one came from Charlton being Gomez and the other came from Bolton, I think it was, that they signed holding from, was it Arsenal? I'm not too sure. I think it was Bolton, but you get what I'm going at. They were both plucked from struggling teams who are nowhere near the Premier League, so no one was expecting anything from holding or Gomez, and... Gomez was fantastic. I don't care who you support. If you watch Gomez in his first season at Liverpool. Before he got injured. And you don't think he played well. You are a liar. He played fantastic. He looked like he was going to grow into an unbelievable player. And then, oh, and then, Gareth Southgate and England happened. And no, I do not mean England's, England's main team. I mean the under-21s, which Southgate was managing. Hmm. Cheers for that, Gareth. You fucking asshole. So, unfortunately, Dilga has got injured. First... Not even playing for Liverpool. Ooh. Ooh, which is why I am of the belief that international all friendlies and football should take place at the end of the season when it won't affect the teams. Yes. I mean, feel free to nominate me for FIFA president. And I don't need 
he wherever amount of bribes the guys like Seth Blair were receiving to oh oh common fucking sense. But I digress. Joe Gomez, he came back from his injury. He didn't really. It was kind of like he was being eased back into the fold. He didn't really like. He didn't come in and play any games. And no, we know he can play left back. Now, someone said to me that they were afraid that Joe Gomez is not seen in a high light by Jurgen Klopp. Jurgen Klopp might not think Gomez is good enough. That's, I don't, I don't think that's the case at all. I, th I think Jurgen Klopp is just like, okay, this guy, he's coming back from an injury and I, I don't want to just... Throw him in at the deep end. I don't want him to instantly get injured again. And because then his career might. Now that might start a snowball effect. A la Daniel Sturridge. I mean. Daniel Sturridge had been. Let properly rest. When he initially got injured. Again. Playing for England. Then he might not have. Then the effect effect of him keep gay of him repeatedly getting injured might not be the case He's, I'll get on to Daniel Sturridge more in a minute but Brendan Rodgers that was one of Ben uh, Brendan uh, Brendan Rodgers worst mistakes he rushed Sturridge back and he paid for it and and Sturge paid for it as well. So Gomez, he did play a few games. Like mostly, he came off the bench, or he might. I think he made a few appearances in the cup. Um, it'd be unfair to give him a low rating on the fact that you know he he's being eased back in from a. From an injury. So. I'm going to give him a 5 out of 10. And not a good season. Not a bad season. Uh, a, 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 a season where nothing of note happened. For Joe Gomez. The biggest thing is that he's back. And hopefully. He'll be more in the full next season. He'll hopefully get some time off. Off. I don't know if he's with the England under 20s who are in the final of the under 20 World Cup. I'm not. I don't know if if he if he's with them or not. I, I like I said. I'm not. I'm not too sure. We'll have to wait and see on that one. But um, yeah, that's the uh, situation. Hmm? Jones, um, did he play any games at all last season? I, I always look at this guy and I think, why is he still there? I mean, he's 62 rated in FIFA at 20 years old, which doesn't pay him in a high light. And when it comes to cup competitions, you never see him used. I think if he if he is for some reason still at the club, which he must be considering he's there, I'd say just get rid of him and pawn him off on a lower league team. I I think he was actually on loan, wasn't? Now that I think about it, he might have been on loan at uh, Swindon, was it, or was that last season? And which I mean. I'm half. I was half. I'm half tempted to fucking release the cunt. Let's get on to Ragnar Clavin. Who Ragnar Clavin? Um, how much did we pay for him? Seven million, according to FIFA, which I don't think is true at all. I know we didn't pay that much for him, so. 
I had my doubts about Brent McLavin. He had a, he had a one or two decent games, and then then it was shown that I knew I was right. Ratner Clavin was awful. He made mistake after mistake. He was terrible. Ratner Clavin gets a 1 out of 10. He gets a 1. He's lucky he gets a 1. He gets he only gets a 1 because he had some decent performances or he began a big fat Zero, zilch, nada, released, gone, bye. Get rid of this guy. Hey. We struggle at the back, and I would n rather have absolutely no one in defense. It's like, if, it, if you gave me the option of playing one at the back with Ragnar Clavin, or playing absolutely no one in front of, of our goalkeeper, or he'd be like, what the fuck is going on? Where the hell is everybody? I would choose no one at the back. I'd say, good luck, Minulite. You're better off this way. You'd rather that and have Ragnar fucking Clavin in front of you. So yeah, he gets a one. Fuck you, Ragnar. Fuck you. Go back to Estonia, you dumb prick. Useless piece of shit. Next on the list is Dejan Lovren. <sighs> Dejan Lovren, he had a very seesaw season. He would be good, then he would be bad, then he would have a good game, then he would have a bad game. Very seesaw, up and down. It, it was very even, you know? I think he just did enough. To warrant a good rating. Rather than a bad one. So. I'm going to give him. A 6.5 out of 10. Not Nothing too spectacular. But again. Nothing that you would say. Hmm, it's a bit harsh. Masterson. Um, did. Again, this, I don't think this guy played any games for us. I don't think he was on loan. Connor Masterson. I think he's Irish. He is indeed. Um, I don't care. I'm Irish and I don't care. I would much rather have absolutely no Irish players in the Liverpool team because there are no good Irish players. Maybe this kid will be good someday. He's 17. I don't know. Ideally, the best thing to do would be to send him on loan. Maybe send him on loan to the Irish division. I don't know. Is there a team that will take him? I don't know. But it's either send him on loan or demote him to the under-18s. Because he's not getting in this team anytime soon unless we have a fucking plague as our back injuries. He's... And it's a choice between him and Ragnar fucking Clavin. Joel Matip. By far Liverpool's best centre-back of the previous season. Which isn't saying much. But Joel Matip had a very good season. He only had one or two bad games. Most of the time he was great. Even And when he was out with... He, he missed a few games with an injury. And when he was missing, you were like... You, you saw how badly he was... Liverpool's defense were missing him. He's like the only leader I see at the back. Because sometimes you see him... Him trying... Him, him, him. You see him... Him having passion. You see him. He's like the glue. For that defense. So Joel Matip. I think he had a very good season. I'm going to give him. An 8.5 out of 10 as well. Like I say. He did have one or two bad games. But nothing I'd be too worried about. I would happily. 
we have Joe Matip as one of our starting center backs for next season as well. Mamadou Sacco, who he didn't play at all. Uh, played the last few games of the season. Only he played for Crystal Palace. Uh, celebrated when Crystal Palace beat us. Despite the fact that we Liverpool will still play it, pay, uh, pay his wages, the cunt, and he's pretty much out the door. Uh, there was some talk, and I'll get into this more later. There's talk that Liverpool won thirty million for him. There was some talk that he might be included in a deal to sign another center back. There was some talk that he might be included in a deal for Virgil van Dijk, which isn't happening anymore. I'll get into that more in a second. But, um, I think Sacco's career is over. Like, he's pretty much burnt his bridges at Liverpool. And the fact that he's... He had the gall to celebrate against Liverpool. I don't care if you are on loan at Crystal Palace... You remember who is paying your fucking wages? Who's allowing your family to eat food? Who's allowing you to live in a house? Who's? Who's? You want to be fucking homeless? We can fucking make that happen, you fucking cunt. So yeah, fuck Manadou Sacco. I hope he sold for 30 million to some Chinese team and we never hear the fuck. In cunt's name ever again. Williams. I don't know. Didn't play. Me. Fuck it. James Milner. Our starting left back. And the game even now has him down as a left back. How did it get to the point where he is our starting left back? I mean... No offense to James, but he should not be there. He knows he shouldn't be there. It's all down to this cunt, isn't it? Let's be honest, it is. It's all down to this cunt. But James Miller, he had a very good season at left back. He did have a few shaky games, but you know, we can't expect the best performance. From a guy who is not a left back. Nor he is. He's not even a defender. He's not even a defender. Her. Her. As I said. It, instead of putting Joe Gomez at left back. Even though he he is a left back. Klopp decided. No I'm going to play Milner. Her. And again. I, I think that's because he was. Easing Joe back into full fitness. But, I mean, what about these other guys? Masterson, or Jones, or Williams. Get one of them to go out to left back. Train them as a left back. Is there any of them out there? He's out of curiosity. No, that, that, that would be a no. Like, Jones is probably the fastest, I think. Uh, they're all a bunch of fucking slugs. Maybe that's why he put Milner back there. Again, Milner isn't exactly he 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 sat he you know, a speed. He, he uh James Milner. Did I give him a rank? I don't think I did. I'll give him an eight out of ten. Very good season for a player who was playing out of position every single game. Alberto Moreno. He gets a zero. He gets a zero. Put the ball in the fucking net next time, cunt. And Trent Alexander-Arnold, he played a few games. Mostly cup competitions or coming off the bench. I see a really bright future for Trent Alexander-Arnold. Oops. Oops. Very versatile player. Very good. Very pacey. He. He def. He's someone who, as a, as Liverpool fans, we're going to keep a close, most keen eye on. Mm. Mm. 
For his performances throughout the season, I'm going to give him a 6 out of 10. He didn't really make any, like, noble, like, I think he hit the crossbar at one point. And that's about it. Uh, Nathaniel Klein, our starting right back. I'm starting right back. I think I did say starting there, though. Um, yeah. Nothing more to be said about that. Nathaniel Klein. He's our starting left. Uh, starting right back. Ah. And, uh, I don't think that's going to change in the summer. Unless, I don't know, maybe Jurgen Klopp is going to, like, buy a right back and move Klein to left back. He did use Klein at left back a few, one, once or twice, so, I don't know. John Flanagan, um, I think Flanagan's Liverpool career is all but dead. The guy was loaned out to Burnley, and he played next to no time at Burnley. Like, he played once or twice, maybe? So, yeah. Randall, Randall didn't play. Randall didn't go on loan, from what I can tell. And, yeah, Randall's another one who could be sent off to a very low team. Because... His FIFA stats don't pay him as a world-class player. Or let's just say that. Uh, Andre Wisdom, if his Liverpool career isn't over, I'd be very surprised. I don't care what league you won, dude. Your Liverpool career is probably over. And to be honest, it's probably for the best. Like, are you not, you're not getting past Nathaniel Klein anytime soon, and with Trent Alexander Arnold coming through the ranks, yeah, you're expendable. Paulo Alves, I think this guy is um, spent the season on loan, so I I I, I don't know. I'm, I'm not too sure. I, I really don't know that much about him. I'm like, I, he was just there. Or I'm like, I was trying to rack my brain, think of who the hell this guy is. I, I, don't, I don't remember his name being mentioned at all last season. Jaria played a few games. Uh, decent performance. Same as Trent Alexander Arnold. A six out of Maybe a six and a half out of ten, because I think he uh, came close to scoring once or twice. Jordan Henderson uh, was played through injuries again. Um, I think it's time for a new captain at Liverpool because Jordan Henderson is. If, if he's just gonna keep getting injured, he's the Daniel Sturridge of our midfield, which you know we don't need two. Bad enough that we have one player who can't stay fit to save his life. I don't know if we're... Lucas might be late even, so if Henderson is going to stay, then he should be a backup player. Sign a new player, demote Henderson, and say, sorry, Jordan, you can't stay fit, so yeah, fuck you. Lucas, for the games that he did play, he... He had a decent performance, but, like, the, his, his most memorable thing was he scored that really good goal against Chelsea and then disappeared. Seriously, his, his face may as well be on the side of a milk carton at this point. And it says right above his, or below his name, Below his uh, picture. Missing. Have you seen this man? We do not know where he is. So Jordan Henderson gets a 5 out of 10. Lucas Leva. Yeah, very, very, very mixed season. 
Is he staying? I don't know. I don't know. You always hear rumors that he's going to move on from Liverpool. He's going to move to Brazil and play out the rest of his career there. Or he might move to this club or this club to just get more game time. And it never seems to happen. He's like, we can't get rid of the guy, even if we wanted to. I, I don't know. I think he's a good figure to have around. I mean, if if he wants to stay, I'd say, fair enough, fair play. I mean, you add more depth to the team. team. Uh, I'm going to give Lucas a 5 out of 10 as well. He had a few bad games. Most of those were spent playing at center back for some fucking reason. But, you know, can't always get what you want. Um, Stewart's only pl- play a few uh, cup games. Didn't really have too big an impact. I'm going to have to give him a four. I think he, really, he was very poor this season in the games they did play. But not too bad because, of course, he only played a few games. Um, Allen was on loan the whole season, so can't really give him a rating because I didn't watch him. Uh, Connor Brannigan, he didn't really, he played a few games again. Another player, you probably just give five and say, you know what, can't really judge you for the games that you did did play because you didn't play consistently. Emery Chan showed how valuable he was, didn't he? And uh, no, I don't just mean because he scored a bicycle kick. I think he was our best midfielder. Or or at least one of our best midfielders. I know some people will say, oh, Coutinho was good. But... I'm more talking about the defensive side because Emery Chan is always getting stuck in. He's always making himself an absolute nuisance to everyone and, and getting on everyone's bad side. He almost always gets a booking. And, um. I think we'd be foolish to let him go. There's some talk that Juventus want him. Maybe they do. I don't know. If they do, Liverpool better be like, yeah, you're going to fucking pay the big money, Emery Chan, from us. Uh, Grudge sat on the bench mostly. Oh, wait. Uh, forgot to give uh, Emery uh, a rating. I'm going to give him uh, an, an 8. I'm going to give him an 8 out of 10. Grudge sat on the bench mostly. Did he come on a few times? I think so. So, I'm going to give him... I'm going to give him a three. He didn't do anything at all. Amalana, before he got injured, I would have said a ten. He was phenomenal. Post got injury, it it took him a bit of time to get back into the swing of things. And he had one or two bad games in that time. And then, towards the end of the season, he simply started to pick it up again. Hopefully, he'll start next season... And like the um, uh, before Christmas, it's hopefully, hopefully he won't get injured again. And, um, I'm going to give Lalana a uh, 8.5. I think he had a very good season. I'm a fantastic player under Jurgen Klopp. I've said this before, completely different player. Like... If you showed Lalana to even Southampton fans, they'd be like, who the fuck is this guy? That's not Adam Lallana. I mean, he wasn't even this good at at Southampton. I'm, I'd go that far. Her. Gene Wijnaldum. I'll admit I had some doubts about Wijnaldum. Did he prove me wrong? Uh, he had some good games, but in the away games, he was anonymous. And a, a lot in some of the home games, he was anonymous. S- sometimes he'll pop up with an important shot or 
He'll nearly score, or he, he got a few goals. He just like, come on, man, show people that they were wrong to say you disappear in games. Otherwise, yeah, they were right. He did. He disappeared in a lot of games. I'm not gonna bash him for that, though. I'm gonna say he did a 7.5. I think a 7.5 is more than fair. Um, hopefully he'll. Hopefully his second season at Liverpool will, will, be the season where we see a better version of Gene Wijnaldum. Obviously, he didn't have a second season at Newcastle, so he didn't, because they got relegated in his first season. So, hopefully we'll see some, uh, an evolution from Gene Wijnaldum next season. Uh, Ryan Kent, uh, spent all season at, uh, Barnsley in the championship, so I can't really give him a ring. Shea Ojo came on a few times, had a few games in the Cups as well. Well, you know, standard f- I have, I have, uh, 10. Maybe 5.5 if you're going to be generous. Uh, Markovic. Ah, you got reggae, friend. If you were... If I was going to mark the players who are on loan, I would have to give you a zero because you failed. Philippe Coutinho, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10. If it would have, if I could play it without getting a copyright struck, like, this would be the moment where I'd play the music of WWE Superstar Ty Dillinger. Coutinho is the perfect 10. Fuck Ty Dillinger. Coutinho is the perfect 10. Ben Woodburn. And another player like Ijaria and Trent Alexander Arnold, a player we have high hopes for. Or apparently, Gareth Bale wanted him at Real Madrid, which I think is complete bullshit. I mean, of all the players you're going to bring, try to get Real Madrid to sign in some kid named Ben Woodburn, they're probably like, who the fuck is Ben Woodburn? Like, I guarantee you, there's no fucking. In way that would happen. Like, Real Madrid would say, Bell, I guarantee you. Look, if he has some good seasons, then we he will go to Liverpool and try and sign him. Fair enough? They're not going to spend an, a lot of money on a young 16 year old kid just because Bell wants him at the club. They're going to have to see he, a good. A, it, season where he plays a lot of games, scores a lot of goals, and gets a lot of assists to know that the, that he's worth their time and their money. Yeah, and the money that Liverpool will demand for him. Sadio Mane, even if in with his injury and this ain't time due to African Cup of Nations, he gets a 10. I'm sorry, if the team plays worse without you, you who definitely get a 10. Oh, he is here. Brewster is here. Um, Wilson. Didn't really see a lot from Wilson this season. Um, so I'm not going to give him a rating. This guy was out on loan, I think. I think he was on loan at a uh, team in Germany. Uh, Brewster didn't really emerge until later in the season. Dangs has been injured since for ages now. Like, I, I, I don't know. Is he ever coming back? <laughs> uh, Brooke. Lennon, I think he's actually still on loan in the uh, MLS because, of course, the MLS has a different uh, time frame for its league than it than the uh, than the Premier League does. So Brooks Lennon, I think, is still out there. Divo Carigi, a lot of people were 
really harsh on him for some reason. I don't know why. I'm going to give him a 9. I don't care what anyone says. The Ryu is very good. It, yeah, he had a few games where he didn't score. But, you know, in case you didn't notice, a lot of players go games without scoring. And I'll get on to someone like that in a minute. First on, on to Roberto Firmino. Roberto Firmino gets an 8.5. Do I want to give him a 9? I'll give him a 9. I'll give him a 9. He scored some very important goals. Goals. He did go quiet in a few games, but he, 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 he popped up in a few games. But overall, I think he had a very good season. I think he's another one who we could see another level to next season. See more from come next season. And finally, we come to Daniel Sturridge. I've already made my opinion on Daniel Sturridge clear. I think it's time for him to go. And since, here's a little stat for you guys. I don't know if this is up to date, but, but Daniel Sturridge has like 13 or 14 goals in the seasons since the season where we nearly won the league. That's around the same amount of goals as Peter fucking Crouch. To me, Sir Peter! And people are, are praising Sturge and disregarding Origi. I'm sorry, what? Do you have a brain? Look, if Daniel Sturridge was fully fit, it, he'd be one of the most deadly strikers, not just in the Premier League, but on the planet. But he will never be fully fit again. Never. Never. So, get over it. Daniel Sturridge's Liverpool career is over. We need to cash in while we can get a new striker who isn't made of fucking glass. I'm sorry, I respect the guy for what he did. It is a little sure, but it's time to get him out of one. It's time to get him out of one. And that is my review. Actually, I should give Sturridge a uh, rating. I'll give him a 7. He was very good at the end of the season. But still, is he ever going to be fully fit again? And on a regular basis, where he played all 38 games, plus cup games, plus that's Champions League games? No, he isn't. So he gets a set. And that brings me to the transfer targets. I'm going to go through these pretty quickly because this video is getting on a bit. Michael Keane. Apparently, Manchester United might be interested in him, but until they make a bid, he's fair game. Um, he had a very good season for Burnley, and I, for one, would think I wouldn't be he, he heartbroken to see he uh, announcement Liverpool sign Michael Keane. I think the, I think he has more. To him, that meets the eye. I think there's more to him. Uh, Ricardo Rodriguez, for some reason, he's down as a center back now, even though I have him down here for left back, not center back. But I mean, if we're if we're not linked with either of these guys, these we're not linked with a lot of these guys, to be honest. 
these are just some suggestions and some players we are linked with. Um, but if, you know, if Ricardo Rodriguez comes, at, if we were to sign Ricardo Rodriguez and he came with the versatility of being able to play center back if need be, and why the hell not? We could play three at the back. We could uh, copy Chelsea, since that seems to be the popular thing to do. Isn't that right, Arsenal? Jerome Boateng, um, I think we need a marquee sign this season. Uh, some thought that was going to be Virgil van Dijk from Southampton, which is not going to happen now. I think we should go to every top team in the world and say, okay, how much for this player? I know, Jerome Boateng, he might be unrealistic, but if we put the money down, if we put enough effort into it, might be surprised with the result. Benucci is another one. Laporte the same. Varane the same. I mean, if these guys, Benucci is linked with with uh, with Chelsea. He, if he's good enough for Chelsea, then surely he could be good enough for Liverpool. Oh, and Varane, uh, he end up at, at Man United. If he's good enough for Manchester United, if Mourinho sees something in him, surely there's something there. And I think either one of these two, if not both, would make a deadly combo. Even one on their own would be a fantastic buy. I have Stefan de Vries here because apparently Liverpool had a bid of 20 million rejected from Lazio. Um, I mean, eh, he'd, be, he'd be a good addition, you know. He'd be a good addition. Um... I really don't have any reason to say I wouldn't want him at the club. I just, uh, it'd be it'd be a an area where I'd say I'd be cautious of it, but I'd I'd be willing to give Jurgen Klopp the benefit of the doubt if he really wants the bridge. Get him. Next name is one I've put on here. Kudabali. Dude's getting in forms, which is always a good sign. He's a very good player or on, on career mode and ultimate team. Look at that strength. I just, this guy looks like he could be a boss of a center back. I think he would be a good addition. And... It would be, it would be like, it, hey man, hey, we have good news for you. Here's uh, another Senegal player. Her. Her. I mean, we see how well Coutinho and Firmino played when they first played together. And you imagine in how well. Well, Manny's performances might go up another level if he has someone, if there's someone on the team. He, he plays with not just at club level, but at international level as well. Oh, Kudabali, I would move heaven and earth if I were Jurgen Klopp to get him. I would say to Napoli... I'll put fifty million on the table immediately. Out of curiosity, I'll actually just approach here to buy. According to this, he's thirty million. Thirty million! That's nothing in today's market. Hell fifty million is nothing in this market. Liverpool need to break the transfer record this season. This might be the marquee sign we need. This might be the sign we need. I would immediately send our representative out to Napoli's. Hey, I'm not leaving here until we discuss a deal. 
Oh, he kicks up his legs. He's like, look, I just want to make a deal for us. That's good for us. And it's good for you. You get money, we get a player. Simple as that. Hey, go about it the right way. Hey, not none of this support. This uh, bullshit that happened with Virgil Van Dyke. Hicks transfer. Right. Pay the money. Go to the team. Say, here you go. This is the offer. If they say no, here's another offer. They say no again. Keep going until they say, okay, okay. That's the fair offer. We'll sell you the player. You negotiate the contract. He has a fucking medical. And he goes in. He gets a fucking t-shirt. He gets his name put on the fucking back of it. He plays for the team. Simple, you know. It sounds so simple. Well, yet yeah, Liverpool make it sound like it's a. It's not that simple. Manolas was actually suggested to me by a guy I was talking to on Twitter. He said Manolas might be a good option. And twenty-five, he. I I don't know. Would he be a good fit? I, I don't know. Comments in the comment section below. What about it? Wouldn't Manolas be a good buy? If I was a Liverpool manager, my number one target would be Koulibaly and Irvine or Laporte. And for left back, it would be Ricardo Rodriguez or Gaia. I still, I have Sessegnon here, but it looks like he's going to choose Spurs over us because he doesn't want to, um, he doesn't want to leave London. I mean, there's a, there's an easy, uh, solution to this problem. Just say, hey, um, look, Ryan, uh, you can still live in London and play for Liverpool. We'll arrange for your transport. And we'll cover the cost. You don't have to pay anything. It won't come out of your wages. Nothing. You can stay living in London and still play for Liverpool. Sorry. He'll be happy. He, unless he's desperate to play for a London club. Now, if that's the case, there's nothing we can do. And he's going to the Spurs or he's staying at Fulham. Or he might move to one of the other hundreds of London clubs. And I mentioned or uh, uh, that's 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 one way we could still get Ryan Sessegnon if he hasn't already agreed to deal with Spurs. I don't know. I haven't heard anything. I mentioned earlier that uh, Bonucci uh, is being targeted by Chelsea. I think if they get him, even if they don't, Liverpool should. It seriously consider Kurt Zuma. What a sign that would be. He, I mean, if Benucci comes in, Zuma is gonna play less games. Which is is that even physically possible? I don't know. He didn't play he had a lot of games last season. And instead of you know, everyone thought, oh, he Zuma might play over Terry. Nope, uh, that Luis came back. And Asmir Quetta was playing at center back instead of this guy. So, Zuma might not be in the best graces with Conte. So, I don't know. Maybe he's available. Abdenor is another her who was suggested to me. So, uh, leave your comments about him as well. Um... I just want to say something about this guy. This is not... He is just representing another player called Vieira. He... Who Liverpool were linked with. I don't even think we're, we ended up getting him. Um, but he was the guy I was using instead. Instead, I'm actually going to remove him from the uh, shortlist. But... Look at that guy's name. That's a phenomenal name. <laughs> and next we come on to William. He is wasting away at Chelsea. He should be playing first team football. Oh. And look. 
He can play in the center or on the right, or I could easily see him out on the left. I mean, it's clear Liverpool are after a right midfielder, considering we're also apparently in discussion with Sporting to sign Martins here. Okay, on to these guys in a minute. And, of course, there's Mohamed Salah, who we're apparently close to signing. Hmm. Actually, uh, I won't remove Correa just yet. I know we're not going to get him. But I'll I'll explain why he's there in a second. But I think William would is someone we should consider if all else fails. Nabi Keita, he's another one who just put the money on the fucking table and get him. Just put the money on the table and get him. Hmm. Dude is phenomenal. I could easily see him being our answer to Kante. I can see that. Is that too high a praise? I don't think so. I think the guy is phenomenal. He can play anywhere right now. He is like a team spy himself. He can play defensively right in the middle or or the forward if need be. He is pretty much another Kante. He is another Kante. I'd say he's he could be as Vital to a team that signed him as Kante. I mean, he almost got RB Leipzig to the title. Oh, everyone was praising this guy. I had to have him and how? Oh, oh. Just put the money on the table. There is the alternative of possibly getting Seth Fabregas because he might be out of favor of Chelsea or Moussa Dembele, who's not really used at Spurs, who might. Also be a good option. I would go with Nabi Keita. As much. You know. Fabregas. Has. Might be a solid. Is a solid option. Dembe. Another solid option. But Nabi Keita. Uh, might just have. The factor. Of. Giving us. A Kante like player. Douglas Costa. We need pace. This guy's got pace. We need a winger. This guy's a midfielder slash winger. And he do, he's not used a Bayern. And apparently he is available for about 20 or 30 million. Hmm. How, how has no one bought him yet? What? He's available for 30 million and he's still there. He's just chilling there. Yep. Yeah. Available for 30 million. A really top class. And another Brazilian as well. Oh. Can you imagine that connection? Coutinho, Douglas Costa, and Roberto Firmino. Mohamed Salah. Uh, if you. If this was post. If this was directly from Chelsea, I'd be like, ugh, the guy didn't even really play. But that's just the thing. He didn't get a chance at Chelsea. He, that was pointed out to me. That he didn't get a chance at Chelsea. He, maybe, I, I think if Liverpool, if we do sign him, he'll see it as an opportunity to show the Premier League what he's truly Worth and to especially show Chelsea, he'll be out to show Chelsea, especially that they made a huge mistake by getting rid of him. Correa was on is on this list, or I sh should say he was on this list. I'm, I'm taking him off. Um, this was gonna be in case. Um, I like a Madrid signed Lacazette, which they're not going to do now. Uh, maybe this is a, a, a January transfer window sign because they'll be able to sign players in January again. It's a, only a one window ban for I like a Madrid. But, yeah, as it is, is, I actually don't have 
him on this is him being uh, Lacazette. Let me uh, just get him onto the list as well. Here we go. Andre uh, Alexander Lacazette. Uh, start at the top, Kylian M Mbappe. An ambitious thought, but you know, why the hell not? Uh, why the hell not? Let's be ambitious. Pierre Emerick Aubameyang, I'd put the money on the table immediately. Hey, yes, please. Defenses will, Premier League defenses will be shitting themselves. If a Bamiyang is around, his pace will destroy E teams. Diego Costa has been exiled by Chelsea for some reason. I don't know why. Is it his temper? Is it his mentality? I don't care. Dude scores 20 plus goals a season. Has Premier League winners medals? Yes, yes, yes. Yes. Would Chelsea sell to Liverpool? I, I don't think Chelsea give a shit who they sell or cost the two. I think Conte just wants to cost the gun. And also, I'm rating a lot of Chelsea players. You know, if any of you are confused why that is, um, they won the fucking league. So, Kane, we actually already have him. Um, but I couldn't. Th this was already set up. Beforehand, uh, Lacazette again, another player who just put the money on the table. Just put the money on the table if he's available, which he is. Don't tell me he isn't because he is. Our curiosity how much would the game say he is worth? 51 million, 52 million. Bang, put that on the table. See what Le Leon say. Hey, they might be like, Ooh, that's a, that's a nice offer. Gomez, this this is a wild card. I I've heard a lot of people praising this guy for having a fantastic season in this area. I don't know. I've seen that he has gotten a few informs. He's quite quick. Argentinian left winger slash can play center for a striker, I guess. My top choice if we're gonna go for a left winger from the Serie Insigne. Hands down, my first choice would be Insigne. Again, another player just put the money on the table. Out of curiosity, how much do Napoli want? 43, 44 million. Let's say 44 million. Boom. Maybe... Maybe you're on top and see something in Gomez. The point is that we need to show why we belong in the Champions League. We need to show that we aren't just stopping off in the Champions League for one season. We need to show that we are back. We are Liverpool Football Club and we should prove that we still run this fucking show. Thanks for watching this really long video. I'm sorry it's so long. But if you can see the, the thought process and the time that went into the video. Smash the like button. Hit subscribe if you are new to this channel. Comment below on what you thought of, of the team, team, what you thought of my ratings, what you thought of my transfer targets, whether they be players we have been linked to or players I am trying to link us to ooh, because they are damn good players and we need damn good players 
if we are going to reassert ourselves to the top of not just English football, but European football as well. Thanks for watching. Hope you enjoy. Smash the like button if you did. Subscribe if you're new. And until next time, you'll never walk alone.